next session. Both of those, you get a little bit of information about um, joining the Corps of Cadets or being a part of Greek life. Um, you can audition for singing cadets, and you do not have to be a Corps member to be in the singing cadets. And then we have our evening social, which is pre-con, um, which is ran by our, our pre-conference coordinator, Shannon. Um, so that's where they can go and like have refreshments and kind of talk to orientation leaders. And it's at the association, which we were at last week. Okay, so a few potential questions you could get uh, from a student on their pre-con day. If I check in on my pre-conference day, do I have to come to check in tomorrow morning? No. Anybody want to raise their hand? Oh, do yes. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If I go to the evening social, do I have to arrive at 6.30 p.m. and leave at 8 p.m.? No. Raise your hand. Yes. No. Yeah. So what else would you say? We highly encourage it just so you can have some fun and get to know others, but there is something you have to go do. We understand completely, and you're fine to leave whenever you need to. Mm -hmm. It's a come and go social. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to raise our hand for this one. It's too hot to take a tour. How else can I see campus? Yes. Do you need an answer? Sure. Um, there's a virtual tour option, or they can wait and take a tour tomorrow morning when it's not so hot. Yeah. Where's the virtual tour? It'll, it'll depend on like where the check-in is. Most of the time, it'll be in Rudder, like in one of these rooms. So. But um, the tourist coordinators, Nathan and Shelby, also check-in coordinators, will let you know that morning or that evening of the check-in uh, where the tour, virtual tours will be set up. So, day one, it's your first mandatory day of the conference. Yay. All right, so bright and early on day one, starting at 8 a.m., is the student and family check-in and campus tours. Um, this is mandatory. Uh, all new students must check into their conference. It's Their name tag is like the ticket into all their other conference events. Um, family members who also want to attend the conference uh, have to check in as well. Um, but in day one, they could go and get their student ID cards made after they're done checking in. Um, these lines are usually the longest on the morning of day one. And let's see, they're made until 4 p.m. But they are not being made during mandatory sessions. And then they could do the professional school advising session. So if they want to go into like pre-law or like dentistry or anything like that, but that's not a mandatory session. Okay, and then they have, um, from backpack to briefcase, so it's just a session talking kind of about like what it's like to transition from being in high school and now being um, in college life. And then their mandatory session, which is welcome session, uh, where you get to hear from orientation leaders talking about like the official welcome to A&M and like all the great stuff about A&M, like our tra traditions and everything. Um, and then they can do these next three mandatory sessions, so joining community of scholars, campus service session, and keys to financial matters, kind of self-explanatory, uh, joining community of scholars, like your responsibility as an a and student now, um, services, the services that a and provides to you, and then financial matters like tuition, how to pay your bills, fees, stuff like that. And still on day one, um, then they'll go to Hattie Lunch and Resource Tables. This isn't mandatory, um, and it's at Duncan Dining Hall, but it's really great if they go because then there's like a bunch of resource tables set up where they can talk to those people and like get connected with all the great stuff a and has to offer. Um, there's the core orientation and registration, self-explanatory, and then the focus learning community. So if a student is part of focus, then they must go to that session. It is mandatory for them. It's kind of like, you know, they get all the information about it and it's their orientation. Okay, so day one questions. Does check-in really start at 8 a.m.? <laughs> yeah. No, no, it starts at like 7.45, be there by 7.45. <laughs> yeah, be early. Starts. Yeah, so, I mean, orientation leaders will be there earlier than 8 a.m., yeah. but uh, typically we like to let the lines go at 8 a.m. or a little bit earlier for running on time and everything. Um, so if a session says mandatory, do I really have to go, or can I let my parents go for me? Yes. You have to go. <laughs> yep, you have to go. Um, the new student conference is mandatory so that you can be a part of like A&M and everything. Yeah, you like that? I have no idea how to adult. How will I know how to pay my tuition? Go to the thingy they have to tell you how to do it. Yes, the yeah, keys to financial right. matters. It's a mandatory session. Okay, I want to be a dentist. Is the OPSA session mandatory for me? No. No. But what else would you say? It's highly encouraged that you go. 
Mm-hmm. You could get a lot of great information, even though it's not mandatory. All right, day one afternoon. Okay, so it's for students who are going to live on campus. Uh, they have a mandatory on-campus housing session. Um, here they kind of learn about like what not to bring into the residence halls and like different safety plans. Um, there's also at that time an off-campus housing session. It's not mandatory, however, like most things, it's advised because you get really great information. Um, they have a family on-campus housing session that's like tailored to the family members, and so they'll go there while their student is learning about living on campus. <coughs> and then they have campus save training. Um, it's kind of just about like the Title IX Amendment and like the students' rights and everything like that, and it's um, mandatory, so you know, be there. Okay, and then you have Aguilana Community of Respect. <laughs> Um, so it's kind of focused on like our core value of respect and what it means to be um, a member of the Texas A&M family. And then while this is going on, the family version is partners in success. So it's kind of like teaching the family members how they can partner with the university and support their student through their transition in college years. Um, and then mandatory, super important, is their academic meeting. So this is where they'll go to like receive information from their advisor about kind of registering for classes and like what's coming up next. Okay. So if I'm living on campus, but I already know where I'm living, do I have to go to the session? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm living off campus. Are there any mandatory sessions for me? No. <laughs> yes. But what else would you say? It's highly encouraged that you go. <laughs> yeah. Should family members go to Aggieland, a community of respect? No. Yeah, in the back. No. Why not? Because it's students only. Mm -hmm. What else could they do? They could go to Ask an Aggie or being an Aggie family member instead. Which is highly encouraged. Actually, that's a little bit later in the day. Um, they can go to the Partners in Success session while that's going on. But yes, very close. We're almost there. All right, day one evening for students. So day one evening, um, we split into two tracks. So student track and family track. <laughs> All right, so like I said, student track, freshman dinner, Aggie Insights, and, Ag and the Energizer is all a part of student track, as well as like CSI Aggieland. Um, Taylor will come up and speak a little bit about student track in a second, so I'll let him kind of decide all that, like tell you all about that. And then CSI Aggieland is the 30 to 45 minute skit that you could sign up for. All right, so if this is from a student, do I have to pay for dinner? Yes. Yeah, no, they do not. As long as they are like a student of that conference, they don't have to pay for their student dinner. I have to meet my family at 8 p.m. Where will we? Where will we be at that time? Rudder. Yeah. yeah. Rudder. Yeah, we're in Rudder. Um, auditorium for the CSI skits. Uh huh. So it's kind of suggested if they have to leave at 8 p.m. that they maybe not attend CSI Aguilan because you wouldn't want them to like get up and like, you know like be a distraction for everybody around them. Um, so it's kind of like after Aggie Energizer, when everybody's moving into Rudder Auditorium, if you want to find like a spot to meet your family members in Rudder, that'd be good. Where's the dance party at? <laughs> Rudder Plaza Fountain area. Yeah, by the fountain, <laughs> right back here. Is CSI in Rudder Auditorium or Rudder Theater? And which is which? <coughs> Ozzy? Rudder Auditorium, the auditorium. Big one on the first floor of the theaters. Mm -hmm. That would be a question you get a lot. All right, day one evening for family members. So family <laughs> track. <laughs> okay, so family track, um, you'll learn a little bit about that in another GM, but you'll have the Ask an Aggie and the Being an Aggie family member. Ask an Aggie is kind of like the question and answer session for family members. Um, it has like a student panel of OLs, which you can also apply for. <laughs> and being an Aggie family member, this is the family member dinner um, where they go and they just like get to see these scenarios played out and learn about like resources for their students and supporting them. Okay, I'm a student. I heard we get to have a question and answer session with OLs. Is that here in Rudder Theater? Yes. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, because the Q&A session is for parents only. 
Yeah, so the question and answer session in Rudder Theater is actually um, for family members. It's part of Family Track. The question and answer session for students is part of the Aggie Insights, which will be like usually in the MSC rooms or in Rudder, um, and they'll be broken up into smaller sections of students and OLs. So if this is from a family member, if we're having dinner right now, where is my student at? Yeah. They will be at Aggie Insights. Yeah, so they'll be going through um, student track, so Aggie Insights and then the dance party, and then possibly CSI. <coughs> is family track mandatory to attend for family members? <laughs> Ozzy. Uh, no, it's not. But it's yeah. highly encouraged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're learning. <laughs> All right, day one evening. So um, after CSI Aggie Land, the family members and the students kind of come back together. And that program is called Being an Aggie and then Yell Practice. Oh. So everybody will meet up in Rudder Auditorium. The students, new students will already be there because of CSI. Um, and the session's just really fun. So when will I meet back up with my family members? Never. Never. <laughs> Great. If y'all decide to do the extra things or all those are over, or if y'all need to leave earlier, y'all can do that. It's up to the family. <laughs> yeah, so everybody will come back to Rudder Auditorium, so they'll all be in the same spot, and then after the like performance or whenever they need to leave, if they want to respectfully get out of Rudder Auditorium, they can meet back. Um, so, students and family members are all supposed to be where at 8.30 p.m.? Yell practice. Yeah. <laughs> of course, it's not a mandatory session, but if they want to do yell practice, which they should, that's where they'll be. Alright, day two. It's the last day of the conference. <laughs> okay, so conference shuttles. So we provide shuttles that will take um, new students and their family members to West Campus. Those will be starting at 7.45 in the morning. Um, we also do trailblazing. Um, it's where orientation leaders will take new students to their um, uh, mandatory college meeting, and that will be meeting in Rudder Fountain. Um, and then the mandatory college meeting and academic advisement. These start at 8.30 a.m., like, sharp, and it's super important that they're there because, you know, they need to register for classes and all that. Um, and then we have course registration falling shortly after. Um, it's important to note that course registration could last until 6 p.m., so they just need to be prepared to stay there if need be. Okay, what time do I have to be at my college meeting? Yeah. 8.30? Mm-hmm, 8.30. Yeah, it'd be advised to get there early. That's when it'll start, so you know. I'm a, I'm a liberal arts major. How am I supposed to know where my college meeting is at? Yeah, so, yes, so that's what trailblazing is for, is to take um, the new students to their college meetings. Um, we'll have, like, all the colleges represented by an OL with a sign, and we'll take them there. And then what time does the shuttle to West Campus start? Catherine. Yeah. Okay, so in conclusion, locations sometimes change. Make sure you always refer to the schedule that is for that conference just to make sure you're giving out the right information. Also, it's important to know that for transfer students, their um, new student conference schedule looks a little bit different. So like familiarize with that, yourself with that before you do a transfer student conference. Um, and then refer new students to their new student conference checklist. It's also in their schedule and it kind of just tells them everything they need to accomplish throughout the new student conference. Um, what questions do you have? <laughs> yes. Who's on the Taylor Swift kick? <laughs> it's more than a kick, yeah. It's a lifestyle. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Next up, dealing with difficult situations. Um, so throughout your new student conference, Sometimes you'll like be presented in a situation that makes you feel uncomfortable or whether you're asked a like controversial topic. Um, so in those times, uh, I, you don't know what to do, so I'm gonna tell you. But anyways, you will most likely encounter one of these situations at insights groups just because the students are away from their family members and they're kind of like in a setting with all peers and they're like more comfortable asking those like potentially controversial topics. So one of those potentially <laughs> controversial topics could be alcohol parties. Oh. 
Hey, bro, where's the party at? You know... Freeze. <laughs> okay. So, a good thing to do in this situation is kind of refer to, like, statistics about um, alcohol consumption in college. Um, also talk about the resources A&M offers if they do choose to participate in drinking, but also the, like, risk of underage drinking. Um, but the best, probably, way to handle this situation is just to swerve the conversation in a different direction. Unfreeze. Drinking and parties aren't as common in college as some might think. Actually, between 25 and 35% per, of all incoming freshmen and new students decide not to drink when they come to college. Well, I'm not part of that 25 to 35%. <laughs> <laughs> Where can I buy alcohol? Um, actually, A&M offers a lot of great things that you can do here. Like, we have over a thousand student organizations that you can get involved in. <laughs> but I want to party now! <laughs> Uh, well, actually, movies are super cheap here in College Station. If you take your student ID, they'll give you a discount. It's really great. But, if you're not into movies so much, we have this place called Grand Station. They have like bowling, laser tag, mini golf, arcade games. It's pretty cool. But even if you're not one to like go out and about and get off campus, there are always Aggie sporting events going on. Interesting. Hey. Is there anything else? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's definitely some restaurants that you can check out as well. <laughs> you know, I did used to play soccer. <laughs> oh, really? Well, hey, there's actually intramural teams that a and offers, so you can join a soccer intramural team. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's a good example of just telling them their resources, but also trying to sway the conversation in a different direction. Uh, what we don't want you to do is in, to encourage them to drink, to invite them to a party, or to share your stories about drinking. Uh, we're the first face of Aggieland to these new students, and as such, we're representatives of not only AOLP, but Texas A&M, and we just want to put like a good impression forward. Uh, listen to the sloth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so another potentially controversial topic could be about Northgate. <laughs> so, what's there to do in this town? I heard Northgate's pretty popular. Yeah, in Freeze. <laughs> okay, so um, you could get this question a lot because new students are new to College Station and they just this morning learned where Rudder Tower is, so they don't know that much about town. But what you should do is talk about the other places that are really great to attend um, and that you can go to Northgate for dancing at Harry's that doesn't involve drinking. Um, there's really great food options and it's also home to a bunch of churches. Plus it has the closest Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not going to start so we quiet down. Unfreeze. It has great pizza, but there's a lot of other great places to eat there too. What else is there to do? <laughs> um, well, you know, there's stuff going on around town. Uh, I definitely would encourage you to check out like the movies and like Grand Station, <laughs> cool places like that. But I mean, there's a coffee shop on Northgate. Um, great place to study, definitely. Cool. I think I will hit you up on that. All right, sounds good. <laughs> okay. So what you shouldn't do is encourage them to drink or that say that Northgate is the only fun thing to do in this town because that's obviously not true. We have 450 movies, which is super awesome and super cheap, and then um, Grand Station, but also sporting events. It's always happening where the Aggies, like, go support them. Okay, bonfire. So obviously bonfire um, is a really, like, big part of our tradition and our history. Um, unfortunately, it's not a university-sanctioned event anymore, but you could still get questions about it. So is bonfire still a thing? And can I help build it? Well, freeze. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what you should do is kind of talk about Bonfire Memorial, but also the history behind Bonfire and why it's no longer here on campus. Unfreeze. Well, Bonfire was a big tradition here at A&M, but sadly, in 1999, Bonfire collapsed and 12 Aggies lost their lives. But we pay respect to them today through the Bonfire Memorial, which is something I definitely recommend that you experience. Uh, personally, when I went to the Bonfire Memorial, it really helped me to understand you know, what it means to be a part of the Aggie family. I mean, to go to a university where no student is forgotten. I mean, it's incredible. But isn't there still an off-campus bonfire? 
Um, Off-campus bonfire is not a university-sanctioned tradition. Um, legally, A&M cannot bring bonfire back. No company will insure it unless it's professionally built. Okay, so what you don't want to do is to encourage them to attend off-campus bonfire or rant about bonfire not being a university-sanctioned event anymore. AOLP and the New Student Conferences are a university-sanctioned event, so we'd like to keep it that way. Okay, ring dunks. So obviously getting your ring is a really big um, time in an Aggie's life. Um, and as you know, some students choose to dunk their ring. So what would you do in that scenario? Oh my gosh, have you dunked your ring yet? I hear everybody does it. Well, Freeze. <laughs> okay, so it's important to say that not everyone does it. Uh, ring dunk is not a university sanctioned tradition. Um, you can talk about the meaning behind the Aggie ring. And, like I said, it's not a university-sanctioned tradition. Unfreeze. Actually, ring dunking is not a university-sanctioned tradition, and not everyone does it. Um, but the Aggie ring is an incredible symbol of the Aggie family itself. And actually, every part of the Aggie ring represents something different. So, for example, on the top of the ring is the shield, which represents how students like maintain and um, you know, take to heart the good reputation that we have here at AM and at our alma mater. Um, but you can get yours when you earn 90 credit hours, 45 here at AM. Awesome. Yeah. So, what we don't want you to do is talk about the ring dunks you've been to. Yeah, Taylor Swift. All right. So, another situation that could occur. Yeah. That could occur is being scammed on or being flirted with by a new student or family member. Um, it is important to keep in mind that we are here to help transition the new students and their family members to college life, not to date them. Hey girl, can I get your number? Um, well, freeze. <laughs> So normally during these situations, yeah, it's cute. <laughs> All right, try to pay attention to me for a second. I'm sorry. Okay, so usually during these situations, you'll have like an OL partner or uh, other orientation leaders close by. It's always great to kind of, you know, get the new student to talking to that OL so you can sneak away. Um, and if you feel uncomfortable, you can always come find an OLM exec or advisor. We're here to help. Unfreeze. That's okay. Actually, I need to make sure that we are running on time. Uh, but do you have any questions from my OL partner? <laughs> 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 so, uh, questions or anything like that? Uh, no, uh, I, I just was really you. wondering what that girl's name <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, She's just young, got some stuff to handle, so um, you know, I'm here to help you if you need oh, cool. uh, any <laughs> 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 I think that's sweet. I wasn't talking about like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what we don't want you to do is to give in to pressure. Um, it could be, you know, flattering to be scammed on, but again, we're not here to date them. And please never give out your phone number. Um, if you want to, give out your email address for like, uh, so they can contact you about maybe getting involved here on campus with organizations or just future networking. That's fine. Uh, I would suggest your TAMU email address, but never your phone number. And in conclusion, know your resources. They can really help you when you're presented with one of these situations. Um, if you're not sure what to say, always try to sway, sway the talk topic into a more positive conversation. And if you ever feel uncomfortable, your leadership team is here to help you. Um, we're always going to be around you, or if not, we're just a phone call away. Questions? <laughs> okay, so if there's no questions, first off, give uh, Felicia, Seth, and DJ a round of applause. And next up is Taylor going to talk about student track. All right, howdy guys. Howdy. howdy. Can you all hear me okay back there? <coughs> yeah, cool. So we're going to learn about student track today. I hope you guys are really excited for it. Uh, I love student track. I hope you guys are going to love it too. I know you will actually. 
Okay, so here's what we're going to talk about today real quick. We're going to have a recap of uh, GM1 for those of you that weren't there, just a refresher on what uh, Student Track is. We're going to go through the timeline of the program. We're going to discuss the different orientation leader roles that you guys are going to have during Student Track. We're going to go over the program details, the specifics of the program, different parts, and then uh, we're going to talk about transfer lunch at the end. So what is Student Track? Student Track is an evening program where new students can come together to socialize and relax after a long day of uh, conference meetings and information, uh, or they can get uh, some first-hand uh, face time with orientation leaders, get to know some of their peers. So why do we do it? Uh, we do it to help the new students get to know uh, people here at Texas A&M who they can uh, you know, go on to have great friendships with in the future, and so that they can have a direct uh, contact with an orientation leader as a resource to them during the conference. So then what does uh, student track consist of? It starts with a student dinner, goes into Aggie Insight Groups, then the Energizer, then it goes on to CSI Aggie Land, and then it ends with uh, being an Aggie and Yale practice. Thank you. So here's a quick timeline of the evening. Uh, you guys don't need to know the specific times that each of these things are going to take place, except for the first and last things. You just need to know that at 4.30 p.m., you need to be in Bethingport Ballroom to get ready for the program. And then at 9.30 p.m., uh, we'll be done, and you guys can go home. So dinner roles. Uh, during the dinner, you guys are going to have various roles. <laughs> Just like those right there. <laughs> but you're also going to have things that are more like jobs and less like food. Uh, so there will be readers, and you guys will be stationed at the doors to the ballroom and just welcoming the new students and kind of directing them where they need to sit in the room. Uh, there will be wristband LLs, uh, four of y'all passing out wristbands as the line goes through. And those wristbands I'll talk about a little bit later, but they just help the student know where to sit and where to, uh, where to go during inside groups. There will be plate OLs. Uh, you guys are more like line control, just to keep the line moving and let people know that they don't all need to try to go to one line, they can go to more than one. And then there will be counters, who will be counting the line as it goes through so we know how many students have come to the dinner, and minglers. Uh, minglers will be in, at, along the line, uh, so mingling with the new students while they're waiting in line, and then also inside the ballroom, uh, kind of directing new students where they need to go, and, and just uh, mingling with them while they're waiting uh, for the rest of the people to get into the ballroom. So then during Energizer, uh, there will be roles for that as well. There will be game OLs. Basically what your job is is just to be stationed at a particular lawn game that's going on, uh, help uh, the new students know how to play that game, set it up, uh, just mingle with people in the area. There will be photo OLs, and there will probably be two of these walking around the Energizer, just taking pictures, uh, just getting that whole experience uh, for the new students that we'll <coughs> get to them later. And then also, uh, these <coughs> OLs will be taking pictures of the insight groups as they come to the Energizer. Uh, and if they're not there yet, then an EA or myself will do that. There are water OLs, and you guys will be hanging out uh, by the, yes. Um, sorry, are the cameras provided? Are you using smartphones or how do you? We have cameras. Okay. Right off, yeah. uh, so there'll be water OLs. Um, the, uh, one of the departments on campus donates a bunch of water uh, for this program so students can get that while they're there. And basically, your job is just to be there to let people know that it's not just like random water sitting around. They're welcome <laughs> to take some water. Um, and, and please make them take the water. Then there'll be dance party OLs, and basically what your job is is just to mingle around the dance party area, uh, try to get people involved, uh, teach people how to do the different dances if they don't know how to do them, uh, just get people really excited and energized uh, during the dance party. And then there will just be minglers, which will basically be everybody else, who just kind of go around the, the energizer while it's going, wrong, going on. You can go to the dance party when that's happening, just go to the games, different parts of the energizer. Uh, your job is just to make sure that anyone that's like standing around and looks lonely or bored or doesn't know how to get involved in something, just go reach out to them and get them involved in what's going on. Okay, so now we're going to get into the program specifics, so the different parts of the program and things that you guys need to know uh, that will be going on at the different parts of Student Track. So before the program starts, you'll come, you'll sign in uh, for attendance purposes, you'll get dinner, because you'll be eating dinner before the new students get there. You will, uh, we'll go through pre-program announcements with you guys. So you guys know what's going on with the MLP and Student Track itself. Uh, you'll sign up for your different roles at Dinner and Energizer, and you'll sign up for your Insight Group partnerships and, and get what room you'll be in. 
And at that time, uh, you really need to pay attention to what your role is and what room you signed up for, so you know where to go to do. You also sign how many intro cards. Uh, if any of you guys went to your student track or your student conference, you might remember that during uh, insight groups, your, your orientation leaders passed out these cards to teach you your how to intro. And on the back of that, your orientation leader signed that with their name in class year. Uh, so you'll sign those for your insight group so they remember your name and also so they can learn their uh, how to intro. Is very important, obviously. And then you'll get in position because the students are coming. <laughs> so, so during dinner, uh, each student will receive a wristband as they're going through the line. Uh, the room is broken up into four colored sections. Uh, so if they get a, a blue wristband, they're going to sit in the blue area of the room. Or a yellow one. Uh, and then uh, that colored wristband also corresponds to what insight group they're going to be with. Uh, and it's not one giant insight group, they'll get broken up into the different partnerships of four years. So your job during that part of the, the program at the student dinner uh, is to socialize with new students. Uh, we'll have a seat at each table reserved for you if there's space. That way you can move from one table to another and just uh, you know, sit down, introduce yourself, talk to the new students, answer any questions they might have. Uh, during this time, you can get seconds if you really want some, you can eat dessert, uh, and you can you can sip on some nice sweet tea, uh, which is your favorite. Uh, and and during this time, there'll also be some music playing quietly, uh, and it'll just be a cue for you guys to you know if you don't know how to get up and leave the table if nothing's really going on uh, at that time, just you know thank them for coming to the conference, let them know they can ask you any questions if they need them, and move on to the next table. Because we really want we really want uh, every new student at the conference to get some face time with an orientation. So then when prompted, uh, I'll let you guys know, and at that time, just go on out outside the ballroom to get ready for your insight group. Okay, so once you're outside the insight, uh, or outside the ballroom, rather, uh, myself, uh, the executive assistants, and other execs will be counting off new students as they come out of the ballroom to go with you to your insight group. So what you'll do is you'll lead them to the room, and once you're there, you guys will go through uh, the different activities. And for you in the room, there'll be a binder with everything here listed, times, instructions, everything. So if you forget something or don't know what to do next, you'll have a resource to consult. But uh, these are the different activities that go on. Uh, you'll introduce yourself, uh, let them know who you are, you'll give them your howdy intros, and then if there's uh, not too many uh, new students in your uh, in your insight group, uh, you can have them do their howdy intros to get them involved as well. Then you'll go into Aggie's life for me. Uh, it's one of the icebreakers that you guys are learning during your GMs. I believe one group might have had it this time. Uh, and it's something that happens at every insight group. So it's the first icebreaker or second, depending on how you want to run it. Uh, but you need to make sure that happens at every one. So then you'll go into other icebreakers like Link or uh, any of the various ones. Link is a good standby, though. Uh, then you'll go into postcards. Uh, we want to send postcards to all these new students. If you went to your student track, uh, you should have signed a, a postcard and wrote down your address. And then, ideally, you would receive that back home before you came to Aggieland. So we want you guys to pass those out so that they fill out the, the addresses. Uh, and we're going to have a template there so you guys can show them, because not everybody knows how to write an address properly. And if it's wrong, uh, it won't get sent. So we don't want that. And then uh, the last part of Insight Groups is a question and answer session. So at this point, they'll just open the floor to any questions that they might have, uh, you know, watch out for those sticky situations, uh, difficult topics, things like that. Um, so it really just you want to give them your experience here at AM. We want you guys to relate to them uh, and, and help them know that like, they're safe coming to AM, they're going to have a great time, and they don't need to be too worried about it. <coughs> so then, at a specific time, uh, which will be on that binder for you, you'll come to, or you'll move to uh, Rudder Fountain for the internet. So at the Energizer, the first thing you're going to do is uh, take your insight group, and you guys are going to uh, take a nice little group photo. Right here, you notice here's two orientation leaders from several years ago. Nice pose down there, uh, rocking the old school headband. Don't happen anymore. Um, yeah, so once you're there, you'll take the group to the Rudder Fountain area. Uh, there'll be a little stage set up with speakers playing music, uh, and there'll be games set up all around the area. So you'll just take them over there, let them know that they're welcome to the games, water, uh, the dance party, everything like that, and then you'll go and assume your particular role uh, at Energy. So the different activities are the games, uh, photos going on, the dance party, mingling with you guys, um, and the energizer is not too long, so hopefully they won't get too bored. But with all this stuff, they shouldn't get bored. 
Uh, then at the end, there will be an Aggies Life for Me championship. So the winners from each of those insight groups, they will have an Aggies Life for Me round uh, in the middle of the, the, the area out there with their insight group, you know, rooting for them, cheering for them, and uh, getting really excited. And uh, we're working on getting prizes together from uh, different vendors and, and businesses around College Station. And hopefully we'll be able to give at least one big grand prize to the winner. And hopefully, ideally, I'll be able to give a prize to the entire insight group uh, that wins there at uh, the end of the So then after that, you guys will move into Rudder Auditorium. Uh, you'll take your, your insight group in there, and you'll try to get them to sit towards the front of the auditorium as best you can. We just want to fill in that area, uh, but not in the front row because that's where you guys are going to be during Yale practice. So once you get into the, into the auditorium for CSI, you want to remind your, your, uh, your insight group about audience etiquette. Uh, you know, all of you who have applied for CSI and hopefully will be in CSI, uh, you guys are going to put in a lot of work for, for that program. So we just want to make sure that the new students, as well as you guys, are very respectful of that. And uh, you know, just make sure it's a really great program, because it is. It's awesome. Uh, so then after CSI, uh, you guys will come meet at the Appellate Visitor Center in the first floor of Rudder. It's actually, if you don't know where it is, when you came up the elevators downstairs, uh, you walked right by it. So in that area right there, you'll come meet up there, and then uh, we'll move into the postcards. But when you get up to leave CSI, make sure your inside group stays there. Because they'll have being an Aggie and then you'll practice. So then at postcards, you're going to write postcards to your group members. Uh, I highly encourage you to try to remember something specific about as many of those uh, insight group members as you possibly can. I know there's a lot of faces, a lot of names, new students, so you, you may not remember everyone, but just try to get something so that when you write your postcard to them, you can put something personal on it, so that when they do receive that in the mail, they can get you know, even more excited and feel like they had a great time at their uh, student track and new student conference. Uh, so as I said, they'll be receiving these back home, hopefully before the, the uh, school year starts. And uh, once you finish that, you'll go wait outside of the auditorium and uh, hopefully keep uh, pretty quiet because there will be a program going on there. And then during yell practice, uh, thank you. So uh, keep quiet while waiting outside. Uh, there will be a program going on. Uh, and you know, noise carries pretty well in that area if you've ever been there. So just keep quiet. Try to keep everybody else in the area kind of uh, chill. And then when the yell ears run on stage, that's y'all's cue to also run in that front row. So you guys want to run in that front row real quick, but you know, be polite and quiet, sit in the front row. The reason you're there is to be a resource for the rest of the new students and family members who are in the auditorium who may not know anything about a and It might be really just like uncomfortable and scared and just don't know what's going on. So y'all in the front row, or if there's not enough room, y'all just around the front area. Your job is to just kind of be there so they know what's going on. They know how to saw it off when it comes to sawing them off. Woo! Uh, thank you. Uh, and, um, and, and so they know to be loud and how to do it. Woo! Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so during the L practice, I want you to be loud. You know, Woo! Around, and I want you to be a fine tech daddy. Woo! <laughs> keep quiet, and then yell really loud. Woo! <laughs> okay, so then after yell practice, we'll have a little closing and parting uh, period there. So you guys will meet back up outside the Appellate Visitor Center, and we'll go through a brief program debrief, talk about things that went well, things that didn't go so well, if you guys have any recommendations, anything happened. Uh, we'll go through that part. Uh, <coughs> After program announcements, things going on at AOLP, <coughs> socials, just, uh, retreats, things that are going on. And then we'll sign out. Uh, and then Woo! you guys are free to go home at that point. It's been a long, long evening. <laughs> Hope you guys have a lot of fun and uh, a lot of awesome food. Free. Get ready for the season. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, quick recap. Uh, that's the Fort Ballroom at 4.30 p.m. That's really the only time you need to know, but you need to be there at 4.30 p.m. Because you're eating dinner before the dinner starts, you need to get there early enough so that you can eat your dinner and get signed up and get everything ready to go. Because if you get there too late, I'm going to tell you that sucks. But uh, you can eat and grab a roll. Grab a we got to go do our job. Uh, so then at student dinner, your job is to mingle. You know, be a resource for those new students. At Insights Groups, you're going to lead that Insights Group. Be a great resource for them there. At Energizer, you're going to help get them really excited and just having a lot of fun. And then at CSI Aggieland, you're going to enjoy the awesome presentation that they're putting together for you guys. For the new students, rather. Uh, and audience etiquette. 
We're going to remind you all of that, and you're going to remind them of that a lot. Uh, and then you're going to write some postcards, and then you're going to yell. Woo! And all of this, I know it's a lot to take in. It's a lot of stuff you, you might not remember. It's a couple months from now, I know it's a lot. So at mock training, we're going to go through a mock student track. You guys are going to see how this all works, all the different roles, and how it all goes from one thing to the next. OK. So now for Transfer Lunch. Transfer Lunch is a completely separate program uh, that is under uh, my purview that I have to, I, I run, as well as my, you know, with the help of my unit. Uh, transfer Lunch is a lunch that takes place during transfer conferences, and it's essentially to transfer students' opportunity to have something similar to student track, to get that uh, current student uh, perspective and as a resource for them. So it's basically the same thing as student track dinner. There's no inside groups, no energizer, but there's the dinner. Uh, it happens four times throughout the summer. There are five conferences, but one of those transfer conferences will have, it'll be a hybrid conference where there'll be a student track. Uh, it'll, it'll approximately be from 11 a.m. to 1.30 on the day one of the conference. Uh, the only differences are that the seating is by college, not by color. And then there are these two additions right here to uh, the program. There's a transfer student panel, which will be made up of you guys, preferably if there's any transfer students available that are working the program, uh, I'd ask you guys to do it first, but any of you guys would be uh, completely capable of just being on that panel. And basically what it is, is I'll moderate uh, if I can, and I'll, you know. Stay Yeah, stay long. Um, and during that, you guys will just answer any questions they might have. Uh, and then there will be student voice speakers, which will also be made up of you guys as well as my EAs. Uh, and you guys will read uh, just some, uh, basically a prepared script. Uh, and you'll just give them all these resources that are available to them. You can put your own little spin on it if you need to, give them your own little experiences. Uh, just that we really want transfer students to feel included. Because sometimes, as a special population, they might feel alienated in some ways. And we don't want that for them. They're also that. Question. I know it's a lot of information. Can you be in CSI and student track? Yes, you can. So if you are a CSI cast member and you are supposed to perform in that particular CSI, you can work in that student track uh, during the Energizer uh, at a predetermined time, which you will know about in advance, most likely the beginning of the Aggies Life for Me round. Uh, at that time, you guys will depart to uh, to to uh, yeah, Seth and Felicia at the Red Auditorium. But this also means that two CSI cast members cannot be partners at student track, because then you're just going to ditch your insight group. <laughs> and that's not it. Yeah. So, well, I guess you kind of answered my question. I was going to ask, like, if you're working the Energizer, you will have an, an insights group? Like, even if you're doing, like, the pictures of the water stuff, like, you'll have an insights group? Yes. So, the, the way it works is that when you as an orientation leader go to student track, when, when you're getting dinner and everything, there will be a job sign -up. And when you sign up for that one, there will be jobs as well as insights uh, groups. So you're going to sign up for an insight group with a partner and a room. And then you're also going to sign up for a role for dinner and a role for energizer. So yeah, you're going to work everything. You're just going to have the different roles. And at a different time, you'll have to move from one thing to the next. Yes, sir. Um, obviously, some of these events are outside. And obviously, it's Texas, so it may not happen often. But what if it rains? Good question. And, and that's, that's very, very true. It does happen. Uh, when that happens, you'll stay in the insight group. In your binder, there will be a resource available for you called the rain plan. <laughs> yeah, because we're unlikely to have like a hailstorm or something if that happens. So stick with the rain plan also. Uh, and, and basically, what you're going to do is you're going to stay in insight rooms for an extended period, essentially until CSI uh, is going to start. So you'll stay there longer, and I'll have some resources in there for you guys, like added icebreakers, uh, just things you can go through to kind of make that time last longer. But you're going to be in there a while, so you'd also just mention to them, it's raining outside, so we can't go outside. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir? If I'm a photo OL, do I have to leave my insight group early to go prepare to take pictures of insight groups? No, you do not, because uh, if, because if, even if you're the first insight group, someone has to take your picture. So myself and my EAs and uh, any execs that are on duty there at the student track, uh, we will be taking the pictures until you get there and you've gotten your insight group all situated. Good question. Yes, ma'am. Since this is a lot of information, is any of it going to be available online or anywhere? It's in the program logistics portion of your binder. So all of this info is yeah. behind that third tab, I think it is. Yeah. And then you can feel free to email me or email a master. So 
Yes, and as I said, we will be going over all of this again in more of a real life fashion where you guys don't have to sit here and listen to me just like yabber at you. We can actually do something and we'll go through the whole process of a student track. You guys will see how it works firsthand and that's happening at mock training. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. This question doesn't necessarily apply to me. I don't know if it's more for Brittany or for you, but if you're doing one of the transfer like lunches or whatever and one of them is like older like a junior or something and they and like they're old enough and they like ask you about Northgate and stuff like that and can you like talk about that anyway or no? No. Because they're, like, Never. Older. Uh, okay. Regardless of your age or the person you're talking to, if they, if, even if it's legal for you to drink and it's legal for that person to drink, uh, because you're represented at Texas A&M and because you know this is their new student conference and the focus is the conference and academics, you still can't talk to them about it. Um, it's going to come up. You guys are almost all going to experience someone ask a question about it at some point. Um, you just have to remember, you can't go into detail about it. But again, we don't want you to lie. Just be honest with that if there are other alternatives and that not everybody can be a part of it. That goes for family members also. Like if family members ask you about Northgate, same situation. It doesn't, it's not just with students, so. Yep. Any other questions? No? All right, thanks, guys. Uh, so. so, the next thing we're going to go to, into is small group facilitation. Uh, but because you guys have seen my face talk to you a lot, uh, my executive assistants are going to present this one to you. So, if I can have them up here. Situation and just remove yourself, you know, just say, Oh, I have to go to the bathroom. 